Ever since I was young, I've always been playing video games. I think the first real games I got into were, of course, LEGO Star Wars and Plants vs. Zombies. Video games have always been a large part of my life, and I'm so lucky to have an audience who enjoys our favorite video game, Deep Woken, as much as me. Recently, I just hit 50,000 subscribers, and to show my thanks, I decided to translate a character special to me into Deep Woken. What's up, guys? It's Punchy, and today I'll be recreating a character so iconic, he practically represents the entire Guilty Gear series. People who care about this series really, really Really care and that is shown off through Soul Bad Guy. Soul Bad Guy isn't a bad guy but he might have some problems with Saul Goodman. One of my favorite video game icons of all time, Soul is a dynamic character who brings life into a world of quiet game protagonists. I really do think that characters like Link are cool but they don't have much to say. All I gotta say is that Soul Bad Guy is pretty damn loud. Harnessing the power of fire magic, his own hands and pure determination, Soul Bad Guy the Gear Slayer buckles down and becomes the bounty hunter we all know and love. I'm not getting too much into Guilty Gear's lore, but that game has been a huge influence upon current day Deep Oaken. You know, this thing. Yeah, events are straight out of Guilty Gear. Anyway, let's get right into it. Sorry to break it to you guys, but I just escaped the Infinity Castle from the last video, and now I'm stuck in the dream world. There's this weird robot looking dude talking about granting wishes or something, but hey, I got all the time in the world to keep on making videos. If you enjoy what I do, please make sure to like and subscribe for more Deep Oaken content. As always, I will be looking for a way to escape, but for now, please enjoy. In Deep Oaken, I tried to recreate Soul Bad Guy's look from Guilty Gear Strive. A lot of his moves and appearance have been updated in Strive, so I focused on this. My race of choice was Grimoire in order to represent his brown eyes and dark brown hair. Soul's haircut is actually insane, but you can do whatever you need to to get that anime look. Moving on to his drip, I did my best to recreate Soul's iconic bounty hunter outfit using a white headband and white deep oaken cloak, which I all dyed red. There's actually an unobtainable outfit in game that straight up is Soul Bad Guy, but for now it's something we cannot get, so I went with the Hive Drone Armor. Across the lifespan of Guilty Gear, Soul has used a bunch of different flame weapons which are all unique. The first weapon he uses is a blunt sword called the Fire Seal which concentrates and expels flame magic. This eventually changes into the Junkyard Dog and finally the Outrage Mark II. In Guilty Gear Strive specifically, Soul uses the Outrage to ignite and release gun flame upon enemies in his typical destructive fashion. In the game we picked up the new and improved First Light which turns any battlefield into a blazing hellscape. On every single M1, we release our very own Flame Charm magic just like Soul to defeat anybody standing in our path. This build was a bit different and I'll explain why. Soul Bad Guy started off his journey as a normal base human until he was granted mythical powers. Similar to this, we started off with some interesting stats to pick up Tap Dancer and Cheap Shot. After this, I hit the Shrine of Order and transformed this build into the final stats we see right now. It's unbelievable how perfect this is for Soul Bad Guy. Soul started off his journey as a bounty hunter who vowed to destroy all the gears, and gears are a species of people who are essentially war weapons, but you know, they're overpowered. Instead, my goal was to destroy all Shrine of Order builds, but just like Soul, he becomes the very thing he hates to further along his own journey. Despite being a gear, Soul continues his path to eliminate all gears. For us, we're using a Shrine of Order build to destroy all other Shrine of Order builds. Now, let's talk about his moveset. In Strive, Soul has a ton of different grabs, those being his basic throw, which resets the fights, wild throw, which is a damaging command grab, and his dragon install super. All of these are essential to Soul's character and put a spotlight on his free form style of fighting which he learned as a bounty hunter. For this reason our flame grab had to do the job of resetting fights to neutral and catching players off guard. You cannot escape from soul's grasp and neither will they if you have flame grab. Next up is soul's iconic volcanic viper. He slams into the enemy with a flaming uppercut giving them a classic chin check and igniting them ablaze. In fighting games these attacks are called dragon punches and they're used to recover safely. The mantra which brought our enemies into the air was rising flame. Applying pressure at a distance or slamming them into the ground this was great for any type of fight. Another talent that could be seen as Volcanic Viper was Flaming Uppercut. It's essentially our Dragon Punch because it uppercuts and it will light people on fire. The next attack that Soul uses is Bandit Bringer. He jumps into the air and slams down into his target, allowing for insane combos and crazy damage. In game, we picked up the Reverse Spark version of Flame Leap to drop on opponents and approach them from above. It's a mix-up tool that people don't expect and it's very fun to use. Harnessing the true power of Soul's Outrage, he propels himself forward with an attack called the Night Raid Vortex. This move closes the gap and allows for additional combos. A giant flame assault gave this move the justice that it deserves. Launch yourself right at the enemy and confuse them with an unfair hitbox. It's perfect for catching people off guard and sniping them from a distance. As I mentioned earlier, Soul is a gear and he does not like being one. Only in the toughest of situations, Soul Bad Guy will release all of his limiters using his dragon install. This transformation turns him into a flaming beast that kills without any emotion. Our version of this dragon install was Flame of Denial with the explosion talent. We rush down our targets without caring 
caring about HP because we know we're gonna get it back. Tyrant's Rave, an explosive super attack that is used to apply pressure and send our enemy flying into the next stage. A very powerful flame attack that Soul uses to explode his target. Ash Slam worked best to push our enemy away and break up their defense with an explosive finish. I also picked up the Wind Up Bell for more explosive output as we release a devastating slash. The final move I took a look at is Soul's Bandit Revolver. This time he rushes his target and hits them with a powerful kick combo which pushes them into a corner. In Guilty Gear Strive, it's very easy to pull this out and start your combo. In this case, I chose Shoulder Bash because it's used the same exact way. We can slam into enemies and combo start or mix up our attack. Anything works with Shoulder Bash. And that's all for Soul's moveset, so let's take a look at the full talent list. Finally, we're moving on to our fights. Check out the full power of Soul Bad Guy, the Flame of Corruption. Thank you guys so much for watching and allowing me to hit 50,000 subscribers. I honestly cannot believe how much support you gave me in this past year, and I'll keep on creating content that you want to see. This time, I made a character special to me, but please leave your comments down below on what you'd like to see. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, and it's punching time.